This is Twit. Hey, uh, a half a yay, one fist up for Japan who made it to the moon and that appears to be it. Yeah, this is like literally hot off the presses. The press conference ended 15 minutes before we, we sat down to record this episode. But Japan is officially the fifth country ever to soft land on the moon. They're, they're slim uh, moon rover. They, if, if, if you've, and that's not a rover, it's a moon lander. lander um, yeah. And they call it a moon sniper because it was designed to test this like really super precise uh, landing technology where it would like scan and then touch down within about 100 meters of a, a target zone. And it appears to have done that you know, remarkably well, the only hiccup is uh, that its solar arrays stopped working after it after it reached the surface. So it's not generating solar power. That being said, though, uh, Japan is declaring it like a successful landing, at least. And I, I guess the hope is there that over the, the as time passes and the moon moves in its orbit, that the angles of the sunlight might strike its solar uh, panels again. Maybe it, it's it's unclear if it like landed upside down or or what, but but they know that they soft landed, um, and that ejected these tiny little micro probes too, um, and they sent back signals. Do that so, thing with your hands again. I need little that, micro. That's my micro probe. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, so, so, you look like I, a crab for a minute, but that yeah. Works. And so and so so a really big and exciting kind of day for JAXA, the Japanese Aerospace Exploration Agency. Of course, they would have liked. A much longer time. It's working on battery power right now, uh, but that battery supply is limited, and it will run out. I mean, it's like a matter of hours. Yeah, yeah. It was like a, only uh, as of the start of the press conference, they said a, a few more hours, and by that point, Slim had already been on the surface of the moon for about an hour or so. And I should point out that Slim is, of course, in a, a acronym. It is short for Surface. Uh, uh, oh, what is it? I have it here. Surface. Lander, a smart lander for investigating the moon uh, is what it's short for. Um, and, you know, it took a, a long time to reach the moon, which is like the, the sad part. It took like six months because it launched in September. Um, but at least it got there. It touched down. We expect to get some photos before the battery dies of its approach and landing. So there will be some stuff to study uh, over time from this one. Now, can I just take a moment here for us to all pat ourselves on the back those of us listening in the United States, because your tax dollars over the decades have allowed NASA and JPL and Goddard and the other centers and universities involved in robotic exploration to take huge strides and have massive, massive successes. And I think we've taken a lot of those for granted. You know, yeah. Opportunity crawled across Mars for 14 years. We landed surveyor uh, lunar landers in the mid 1960s, and that was all a ramp up to Apollo. But they worked, and even the Rangers, after the first six failed, <laughs> worked. Those were impactors. Um, the earliest Mars lander, the Vikings, in 1976. So, not not to wax too philosophical about this, but it's astonishing what's been achieved by both the US and the former Soviet Union, and of course now by China and India, but this is just a demonstration of how hard it is. And it's, yeah. it's, it's really valuable that different countries and now private companies are trying to learn how to do this for a lot less money because we did chew up an appreciable number of tax dollars <laughs> during the space race and beyond to do this. But I just, you know, my hats off to the people that have made it work both here and in the former Soviet Union back in those old days when, let's remember, transistors were a new thing in the 1960s <laughs> and computers were really stupid and uh, all hard-coded. And the ones that did, were actually able to record data did it on reel-to-reel -reel tape and spacecraft like the Voyagers. So the fact that that stuff worked as well and as long as it did and the landings were successful as they were as frequently as they were is a really big deal. And uh, again, we're just being reminded once again, of how oh. it's all is. Oh yeah, and and you know, Japan, is, JAXA is is kind of declaring the landing itself a success. They said that the right. solar array problem is actually like a separate issue mm -hmm. from the landing. At least at, at first blush, they're going to uh, obviously look into it. But you know, I should point out that this isn't 
Japan's first attempt to land on the moon. There was a a, a small a small lander spacecraft um, on SLS for Artemis One when it flew. Yeah. Uh, the company uh, iSpace from Japan uh, tried to land a, a private. Uh, moon lander on the moon, and and that one did fail. Uh, and so, so this has been uh, kind of in the in the wings, waiting to happen. And now that they've hit this milestone, they actually said that the head of JAXA uh, that they will be building more landers for the moon to come. They're not going to stop just because of this uh, this issue. Uh, and you know, just kind of like a watch this space, if you will, <laughs> for uh, for the future. And of okay. course, they're a, they're a partner with NASA too on the Artemis yeah. Accords and whatnot. So, well, and that is an interesting point, and I don't want to get straight too far from the headlines because we have other stuff to do today. But you know, if you're designing something today, especially for private industry, if you're designing a lunar lander or a lunar orbiter or a Mars lander, Mars orbiter, or even a, a, a crewed spacecraft, you're not starting from zero like somebody did 60 years ago. You're looking yeah. at blueprints from a number of different countries, at least the ones you can get, of their spacecraft. You're looking at their technology. Then you're trying to compare that out to current technology, especially if you can use off-the-shelf stuff and what that's capable of doing. So you'd think it would be a lot easier, but even even NASA's having trouble uh, reconstituting lunar capable heat shield so well and and, and there's also a lot of partnership you know we're, i know we're going to talk about astrobotic in, in, a, in a little bit but another thing that happened this week was you know india landed on the moon we talked about that uh with the uh, the vikram lander and nasa's uh lunar reconnaissance orbiter bounced a laser off of that that lander which has just been sitting there you know kind of dormant uh and so there and that's because there's a nasa experiment on that indian lander uh and they're able to still pull the science like out of it this you know x many months later on. Um, and that kind of partnership, I think, will also both spread the number of attempts that we're going to see coming right. forward, but also, uh, you know, you get like some additional results out of a lot of these things that we weren't really looking for too. And Vikram landed in December, correct? Man, I'd have to go back. Has it been that long? It feels like it's been said, like a million years. You said last week, but I, I think no, it's the last least, the last few months, right? Because it, it, yeah, it, I think yeah. it landed in September because it was only there for 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 the lunar day with the Pragyon uh, lander. Oh, you're right. Uh, yeah. And then and then it went it went silent. We were waiting for it to wake up in September, and it didn't. So look at us right on top of the moon here. Hey, if you enjoyed this clip, be sure to check out this week in space. You can find us on your favorite podcast app, or see the link in the description below. See you there.